everyone. Welcome back. My name is Andrea. I am the Knitting PT on Instagram and here on YouTube. And today's a special episode. This is the Everything I Made in 2022 episode. So I'm going to go through piece by piece everything that I've knit in the past year. And almost everything's here. There's a few pieces that were gift knits that are not here. And I will do my best to insert a photo or old footage from previous podcast episodes of the items as I go through them. So I'm going to go through chronologically and I will list, I will say, you know, what, um, pattern it is and what yarn it is. Um, I think for the sake of not having the description notes be super long, I'm only going to link to the patterns, okay? And then I will link to the individual dyers in a separate part, but I won't be listing out what the colorways are or anything like that. Hopefully that's okay. If you have any questions, you can always pop the question below. Um, and I will also have the description bars on the bottom that will tell you the pattern name, the designer, and the yarn too. Okay, um, so let's get to it. So I'm going to be looking down periodically because I have my notes on a laptop in front of me. And then at the end of this video, I'll also do, I'll, do, I'll answer some questions that I had you all submit to me questions about my 22, 2022 makes. So in 2022, I made three kid knits, 22 adult sweaters, and one hat. So total, I made 26 items. Um, yeah. So let's dig in. So the first thing I finished was the Chalet Day sweater by Samantha Guerin. And this I made in Moondrake yarn and the colorways are navy and mochi donut. So it is, as you can see, color work, top down sweater. Um, yeah, and it's a very striking design. And that's number one. Number two, and now I realize I don't know where I'm gonna put these. I guess I'll drape them on the back of the chair until they fall off. The second item I finished was the Isla. This is a sweater pattern from the Ready Set Raglan book by Pom Pom. It is a two by two um, garter rib. Two by two garter rib. And the yarn for this is the Red Pansy, and this is in her October Monet Club after the painting Chrysanthemums. And if you missed it, I did a whole year of make starting in 2021 where I made a sweater for each month of the Red Pansies Monet Impressionisms Club. I have a recap video of that up on my channel if you're interested in seeing all the other sweaters that I made too. All right, next was the Little Camaro. This is a pattern by um, Tin Can, not Tin Can, it's um, Canis Fiber Arts. And I made this for my daughter. And it's just a bunch of rainbow scrap minis that I had in stash. The main color, I think, is a Quince Co. color. The fourth item was the Clotilde, which I'm wearing right now. So this is the Clotilde sweater. I think it is by Knitting for Olive. I don't remember, but I'll put it down below. It's in all over lace work sweater. It's written for, I think, bulky weight yarn. I might, I think I knit this in Aran weight. This is Woolberry Aran in the colorway Dashing. And in hindsight, I would have knit bulky because as you can see, it is quite lacy, very holy. Like I can't, I have to wear a shirt underneath with it. Um, I have seen versions where people's, it looked like their lace was not as open and they could wear it by itself. Um, so I think if I were to knit this again, I would definitely use like a, a true bulky yarn. Um, but I'm still pretty happy with how it turned out. It's a perfect holiday color. That's the Clotilde. Next is the Grain. This is also from the Ready Set Raglan book by Pom Pom. It is a garter stitch raglan. And this is in the Red Pansies um, November Monet Club, Island of Nettles. I'm sorry, the sun is shining in right now, so I think it might be blowing out a little bit of the color here, but I will always try to fix this in editing. Yeah, this one is one of my favorite sweaters. Super comfy to wear. Um, yeah, the fit is oversized fit, of course. I don't remember how much ease I have. I probably have seven to nine inches of ease, positive ease, and I really like the fit. It's like a very comfy sweatshirt fit. 
All right, next is the Dear Duomo. This is by Sung Hee of Sung Hee Knits. I test knit this for her. It is a bottom up drop shoulder and it's got this, the main detail I love about this so much is that beautifully neat picked up collar, which she teaches you her technique for doing to get that neat, super neat look. The yarn for this is Watering Flock in the colorway Birthday Ice Cream. And this is one of my favorite ones to wear. I wear the sweater a lot. I reach for it a lot. It's super comfy on me. The fit is very flattering. It's just very comfortable to wear. One of my absolute favorites. I do want to make another one. Okay. Next, this is the Phases Sweater by Native Knits. Native Knits, yes, Native Knits. Jennifer Berg, Native Knits. It's a DK weight short sleeve tee with this beautiful color work design on it. Um, I used a bunch of different dyes for this one. So let's see, uh, the main color here, this is Plank and Stella Send Nudes. The gray is House of Alamo Tailor Suit. The light gray, if you can see the light gray that's alternating with the dark gray, that is Plank and Stella Pirate's Booty. This rose gold color is Shador Fibers Rose Gold. And what else? There's another color in here. Oh, this chocolatey color is Chocolate Mousse from Amanda Hope Yarn. Is that the only spot it's at? I think so. Yeah. Uh, okay. I'm looking at my notes because I know that interspersed there are gift knits and there are sweaters that I don't have here. So I'm just making sure I don't drop them. I don't skip them, which is why I keep looking down. Um, next, we've got the Javelin Pullover. This is by Tati's Knit Garden. And the color, this is the Red Pansy in her December Monet Club. And what was that one called? I don't know. But this was the December Club yarn. Javelin pullovers with this beautiful yoke textured stitch design. Um, next, we've got the Poetry Pullover by Sari Nordland. This is in Camellia Fiber Company's Moonflower. This is the front, yeah. This is beautiful all over lace. Um, Mike, so I've talked about this before, so if you heard this before, I'm sorry. But the gauge, my gauge on this was, it was on, but my sweater still turned out not oversized the way it should have. It should have been knit, when it was knit up, it should have had like three to four inches of pods of ease. I pretty much have like zero positive ease with this, um, which is nice if you're getting us, it's a very slim looking fit. So it goes great with like dresses and skirts. Um, but I do want to knit another one where it's actually has positive ease in it. Cause I like that look too. Um, I think what happened was I used sport weight yarn for mine and instead of like DK. And I think that's the difference. Um, yeah, so probably I'm going to try to knit this again in probably 2023, hopefully, and use an actual DK weight yarn. And hopefully it should turn out the way you should and also because i ran out of yarn on this one they're like three quarters length sleeves instead of full length sleeves my pile of yarn is falling okay next we've got the willa tea this is by um this bird knits annie haas i think is her name and this is in craft me not yarn co in her merino linen base in the colorway cafe so we've got this beautiful lace. This tee is super comfy to wear. I wore it a lot in the summer too. Um, and the merino linen blend is just softens up more the way the more you wear it. Um, yeah, it's super comfy. All right, next we got the cozy classic raglan, or as the internet is calling it now, the BFF sweater. This is all in Explore Knits. So this is Explore Knits. Um, I always forget nightfall linen daybreak and to the stars who listen and it's called a bff sweater because originally jackie woolen oaks and ally explorer knits were knitting themselves the same thing in different you know the same color ways but like different orders and then i discovered i had the same exact colorways as they did and then jackie invited me to join them in their friendship sweater and so i did and then it just kind of grew from there so a lot of people are doing it now which is super fun i'm really excited to see all the different color combos that people come up with 
But this is the Cozy Classic Raglan by Jesse May. And I just, um, I had someone ask me once like how many rows I did per color or inches. I didn't really count. I mean, like I did count, but I didn't write any of it down. What I basically did was just measure from my shoulder to where I wanted the hem to fall. And I divided that number by four. And that was just how much I knit each stripe. Um, and for the arms, I did something similar, except for the arms, I just knit each longer. Like you can see the stripe for the arms is a little wider or longer, longer than the stripe for the body. And part of that was just because I knew if I kept the same length of the stripes for the sleeves that I would have to repeat more than one color at the bottom. And I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to end the color at the cuff. So I just kind of winged that too. I knit the sleeves two at a time, like each on their own set of shorties. And I just kind of went back and forth to make sure that I had enough yarn for both sleeves to match exactly. So that's how I did that one. All right, next we have the Salty Air. This is by Samantha Guerin. The short sleeve tee with a lace yoke. This is in the Wandering Flock Pistachio Cream. Okay, next we've got Onward and Up. This is by Tiff Nealon. It is a, it's like a, I guess it's a tee. It's a sleeveless tee, I guess, what you could say, with a boat neck. This is in Camellia Fiber Company. This colorway is clay. Thank goodness I took notes. Camellia Fiber Company clay. And this is Madeline Tosh in Modern Fair Isle at the bottom, this bottom kind of chevron lace detail. Yeah. All right, next we've got the Coloring Book Tea by Amy Schur. This is View A. So there's just a little bit of contrast at the hem. And the yarn for this, the main is Tote Matin in their cotton base and the colorway is Amakusa. And then for the little bit of contrast hem, at all the ribbing around, I used Explore Knits, um, what was this called? Dreamscape. It was one of the 2021 advents. All right, the last, the next thing I made was the Jones Cardigan by um, Tin Can Knits, and I used Madeline Tosh for it. Madeline Tosh, where right? Stove pipe. Um, I don't have it because it was a gift knit for my dad, so I'll try to insert footage um, of it wherever I can. It was a really big project. I'm really proud of it because it was an all-over cable knit sweater with, I think there was like seed stitch in there too. Um, it was just a really big project. It was probably the biggest garment I've knit ever so far, um, so I'm really proud of it and it fits in great. Okay, next we've got the Lace and Fade Boxy. This is by Hohi Locatelli. It's an oversized lace, quarter length, three quarters length sweater. Uh, the colors I use for this is this through the yard, through the wardrobe, and the colorway is uh, Kiss by Frost, and then the fluff. This is Ching Fiber Veronita, which is a cashmere lace weight blend, cashmere and silk, and the colorway is Atmosphere. All right, next we've got the Brooklyn Raglan. This is by Tori Knits NYC. This is in Woolberry Fiber Co. Golden Sunset. This is also another one of my favorite sweaters that I made this year. You can still see I have ends hanging because I ended up crocheting um, a slip stitch around the neckband just to bring it in a little bit closer. My neck was a little too wide um, for my liking, at least. Yeah, but I really like it. It's a raglan and then you've got these textured sleeves. All right. Next, we've got Ali sweater. This is by Sarah Opie, Estat Knits on Instagram. And this is in Woolberry Fiber Co. This main color is Eloise, and then the contrast color is Lake of Shining Waters. 
in. Now the sun is really shining in. I'm sorry. I might try to adjust. No, well, the sun's just right there. Ah. All right. Next, we've got Anne's puff sleeves. This is another design by Amy Schur, and I also did this in Woolberry Fabrico. So. This is inspired by Anne Shirley and her love for puff sleeves. So you can see there's a puff sleeve detail, an I-cord where you gather up all the stitches so it forms this lovely puff. You've got this beautiful lace raglan detail. And I knit this in Woolbury Fiber Co. in the natural DK base. So it is non-superwash um, and it's, it's super soft. Bethany's non-superwash uh, non is very soft. And this is the colorway Bosom Friends. Next is the Double Date Sweater by Winter's Weathers Knits. And for this one, I used Hawari Bazaar yarn for the main color. I'm trying to get out of the sun. I'm trying to shoot. Hawari Bazaar. And um, the colorway is Grand Mosque of Damascus. The little pink, this is Explore Knits Arches National Park. This is Plank and Stella Seizure Salad, and this is Plank and Stella Millennial Toast. I thought I'd figured out the lighting because I figured out that at least the sun doesn't shine in so much directly into my office in the afternoon, but apparently today is very sunny, so nothing is blocking the sun. All right, next we've got the Four Keeps cardigan. This is another one for Samantha Guerin. This is, again, a Woolberry Fiber Co. This is Tattered Pages. So this beautiful cardigan with a cable design. If I can show you. Okay. The sun finally got to a spot where I could close a curtain and block it. So we should be hopefully good until it moves again. So again, there's this beautiful cable design down the front. What I love about this pattern is that it looks very fancy, but it's actually not very hard to knit at all. It's not brioche, it's not fisherman's rib. Um, and then I also love that you knit the button band at the same time. I mean, it doesn't have buttons, but you knit like that collar button band at the same time. So there's no pick up, picking up stitches at the end. All right, next we've got a coloring book raglan. Again by, ah, oh, my pile of sweaters just fell. Again by Amy Sure Makes. And this is View B, which has the stripes. And this is Coast to Coast Yarn, Red Panda, and Kodiak Bear. And I really love this one. All right, next we've got the No Frills Junior. This is by Petite Knit. I knit this for my daughter. The yarn for this is Jador Fiber Cinema Roll. And next, we've got the Building Blocks Drop. This is a test knit for Amy Sure. It is not out yet. Um, it'll be out in January. So keep an eye out for it then. I really love it. This is in Camellia Fiber Company Blackberry. It's a drop shoulder design. It's got a beautiful split hem. And there's a pocket. So I actually improvised this pocket myself. She has a pattern written for kangaroo pockets, the kind where like there's just an opening on top. Um, and I decided to kind of modify and make a hoodie style pocket with Amy's blessing. Um, I have my modifications up on my Ravelry page. So you can take a look if you buy the pattern and decide you want to add a similar pocket. I will say though that I only, that this is scaled to my size. I knit size two, okay? So if you knit a size smaller or larger sizes, I would like take my notes with a grain of salt, like adjust it and just look at how your sweater looks. Like don't use the exact same numbers as me because it won't look good. It'll probably look like the pocket's too large or the pocket's like hilariously small. But if you knit size two and you wanna do the pocket, then you can probably feel free to copy my notes exactly. Yeah, but it's beautiful. All right, and then the last thing, oh wait, it's not the last thing. <laughs> and then what I've got last is the fluffiest vest. This is for, uh, by Hannah Graham, Hannah G Knits. 
This is a kid vest design in boucle yarn. I used Roy Knits boucle in the colorway Boba. Got buttons here. Don't ask me where I got the buttons. I found them in stash and I bought them years ago. I probably bought them off Etsy or something. They're just wooden buttons. Um, yeah, it's this cute little vest. Um, ironically, after I spend so much time making it, my son won't wear it. <laughs> Kids, right? Um, and then the last thing I made, which I do not have, but I will insert a picture or footage from the last time I showed it, is a Manhattan hat for my daughter's teacher. I knit the largest size and I knit it in Woolberry Fiber Co. The Cuthberts and Winter's Eve held together for a model look. All right, so that is everything I knit in 2022. Um, that's a lot of stuff. I probably rushed through everything. Um, hopefully I didn't go too fast, but in any case, I pretty much discussed all of these things in detail in earlier episodes of my podcast. So if you want to hear more of my thoughts about them, I guess you could comb through old episodes if you really wanted to. Um, yeah. Um, so now I'm gonna switch to the Q and A and kind of answer some questions. All right. All right, so one of the questions was, what was my favorite memory from Rose City Yarn Crawl? So in February, I went to Rose City Yarn Crawl with a bunch of my friends, um, Shador Fibers, Our Own It's and Pearls, Kim Chi and Co, The Red Pansy. Um, a bunch of us went and we stayed in an Airbnb together and we drove around together to all the different yarn shops. We got to meet Coast to Coast Yarn, explore knits. Um, it was a ton of fun. I think my favorite memory though was probably, I think my favorite memory is probably when we would all get back to our Airbnb at the end of the day and we would lay our purchases all out on a huge table and take a look at everything because it was really fun to see what everyone's color preferences were and what everyone was buying and everyone certainly had their own tastes so it was just really fun to see all that and to see all that yarn laid out my other favorite memory was just the time we spent together at the airbnb um a night after we had dinner we would just kind of hang out and chat and knit and it was just really fun to spend time in person with friends that i'd made online that I'd never met in person before. Um, let's see, so second question, best sweater construction fit for my body? So I have come to a conclusion that I think the best sweater construction fit is actually a drop shoulder. It's what I feel most comfortable wearing. Um, yeah, and I think it's just something to do with um, the drop shoulders and how it sits. I think I have I don't have broad shoulders for sure, but I hesitate to say that I have narrow shoulders. Um, but drop shoulders always, like I never feel like I have to fiddle around with the, how they sit on my body. Um, I like that when I raise my hands up, it doesn't, the whole sweater doesn't come up with me, that everything pretty much stays put. Um, so I'd say drop shoulders are probably the best construction fit. Um, as And then on the other side of that is favorite sweater construction to knit. Um, my favorite construction to knit is raglans. I just love the way they look and I like how rhythmic it is and intuitive it kind of is to knit. Plus it looks really nice when you're doing it. Like drop shoulders just kind of look like you're knitting rectangles until you start to split for front and back and join at the body. Front Drop shoulders also feel like they take forever because you're starting out with the body of the sweater and then you get up to, you know, the funner parts up here. Um, yeah, so I still like knitting raglans best. All right, favorite color work. So this is a reference to my favorite color work design from 2022, and it would have to be the Chalet Days. I'm trying to find it in this pile of sweaters I have now. It would have to be the Chalet Days because it is very striking. It's just so striking. And it looks so clean and neat, and I am not the best at color work yet. I'm getting better, but you know, I definitely have looked at my own work and seen that you know that doesn't look as crisp as it could be um i'm slowly improving on that but with chalet days just the way the design of the color work looks like you just it's just going to look clean no matter what all right project that taught me something new um let's see so i would say the project that taught me something new is probably the dear duomo for the picked up collar. Like, look how neat that is. That is so clean and neat. 
and I'm not going to give away what the technique is because you have to buy the pattern for it um, but I will say like I thoroughly enjoyed how to do this clean collar pickup from Sunghee I really like it it looks so good um, yeah all right favorite most worn project okay it is definitely my dear Duomo um, partially because it looks so clean and neat. I love the colorway from Wandering Flock and also because it is a drop shoulder and it feels the most comfortable. Um, it's also the one I think where the collar fits me perfectly where it's not too wide and not too close. It's like sits at that perfect spot that I like for a collar. Okay, most challenging project. I think the most challenging project was actually the Jones cardigan that I knit for my dad. It was most challenging because it was a lot of cables. It was a lot of yarn. It was just large. Um, and it was challenging to knit something for someone who was not here for me to try it on them, to make sure it fit. That made me kind of nervous. Um, yeah, so I would say most challenging was the Jones cardigan, just because of the size of it and then all the cables. Okay, most rewarding. I would say most rewarding is probably again the Jones cardigan. Sorry, I keep looking at my pile because I'm trying to like figure out if there's if I'm missing something that I'm thinking of. But I think it's probably the Jones cardigan again because my dad really likes it. Um, now that it's getting colder where he lives, he's wearing a lot and he sends me pictures every time he wears it, which is really cute. And it's really fun as someone who knits and then gifts it to see whoever you're gifting it to actually use it too. All right, favorite pattern, yarn, and colorway. Okay. Um, so favorite pattern, yarn, and colorway. So favorite, I'm going to start with what I can say. So favorite yarn, I would say, is probably Woolberry Fiberco. I used a lot of it this year, and for good reason. I have a lot of it in my stash, and it was time I started knitting it up. It's so my favorite because it knits up very evenly. Um, like all the, like for example, this one, Brooklyn Raglan and Woolberry, I did not alternate skeins and it looks very even. And I'm not saying this as an advertisement to say that if you knit Woolberry Fiberco, you should not alternate skeins. I say, if you want the best overall even look, alternate skeins. That's always the recommendation. I just don't because I'm kind of lazy um, and I will take the risk. And so I always take the risk and it always, it's always so far turned out really well. So that's favorite yarn. Um, favorite pattern. Favorite pattern I think is probably going to be the grain sweater because I love the way that the garter stitch looks in a sweater. And also that raglan detail of stockinette going through. And favorite colorway is probably this Explore Knits. And by favorite color, I mean all of them. I love the way they all look together. Yeah. But if I were to pick from these four my absolute favorite, it would be Nightfall. favorite to make um, and I assume that means like the process of knitting it um, I think probably my favorite to make was the um, the coloring book raglan and it was a favorite for many reasons one of the reasons was that um, I like making raglans the second part was that the stripes in the body make it go by really fast because you're always waiting to get to the next stripe and also just that twisted rib detail looks so good. And there's also a twisted rib detail on the side here too. Um, yeah, so I would say this is probably my favorite to make. Um, yeah, and it might have been because this was one of the few that I made this year that was not a gift knit and not a test knit. So it was kind of on my own timing. It did take me longer to make because it kept getting set aside for test knits and gift knits. But I did really enjoy knitting on every moment of it, you know, because I had no deadline looming over me. I had no rush to make it. So instead, I just really enjoyed the whole process of making it. And I really enjoyed working with Erin's yarn. And this was my first time using her yarn. And I really loved it. 
All right, and then last question, how do they hold up with pilling and such? So for the most part, all my sweaters held up pretty well. Um, the ones I wear the most, there's definitely some pilling like on, let's see here. Like I know on my Dear Duomo, there is some pilling and I tend to get pilling on my arms, probably because of the way I move. Um, where is it? <laughs> now I can't find it. I definitely, I do like, I do shave my sweaters, like depill them every once in a while. So that's probably why. Um, but for the most part, they all held up fairly well. Um, not a ton of pilling, um, just a little bit, like kind of underarms in this area. Um, let me see. But it's like very normal kind of pilling wear and tear for when you wear your sweaters. Um, nothing out of the ordinary. I say that for the most part, everything held up super well. Um, and if you're rather new to me, um, I only really started knitting garments in 2021, very seriously. So this past year was probably the first year where I really had more hand knits to wear on a regular rotation. Um, yeah, and even the ones that I wore the most, you know, the Dear Duomo, which I wore the most and where else? They're all buried under each other now, so I can't really find what I'm looking for. But the ones I wore the most still look pretty good. Like I also wear the Brooklyn Raglan quite a bit too. And I know because it's tweed, it probably hides some of it, but you know, it really looks quite almost brand new. So I would just say, yeah, they held up fairly well. I mean, probably the one that has the most pilling is actually my daughter's sweater because she wears it a lot. She wears it like several times a week sometimes. You can see on the underarm here, there is some pilling um, and there's some pilling on the body. But that's to be expected, you know, she's a little kid, she's wearing it a lot. Um, but even then, you know, once I shave it, it'll look as good as new. Yeah. All right, so that is it for everything I knit in 2022. That's it for the Q&A also. Um, thank you to everyone who submitted questions. Hopefully I answered them pretty well. If you have other questions that I did not answer or you just thought of, you can feel free to pop in the comments below and I will try my best to answer them. Um, since we have some time left, I think, I'm gonna go into really quick what my plans are for 2023. Um, so for 2023, I have kind of loose goals in mind. Um, I don't set any more. Uh, I, so in 2020 for 2021, I set a make nine goal which is that very typical thing where everyone picks nine patterns that they want to make for the next year. So I did that at the end of 2020. And I made, I think nine out of 12 of the patterns actually. But I realized also that, you know, throughout a year, your taste can change, your style can change, what you want to knit can change. So I've decided not to do that anymore. Um, and instead I'm going to make more general overarching goals. So I test knit a lot. Like I think I should have counted, but I think at least half of the sweaters I made were all test knits. And for me, I enjoy test knits because I enjoy the rush of a deadline. I enjoy getting to know the designer more. Um, yeah, that's basically it. It's really more so the thrill of meeting a deadline. Um, but in 2023, I want to knit less test knits, partially because I have so many other things that I've been waiting to knit that keep getting pushed back by test knits. So my goal for 2023 is maybe to only do one test knit a quarter. We'll see how well I hold to that. Um, but definitely I just wanna do much less test knits. Um, and then I also wanna knit other things besides garments. Cause as you can see, I knit pretty much all garments in like one hat. Um, and so in 2023, I wanna knit a pair of socks at least. I used to knit socks. I got away from that when I started knitting garments but I wanna get back to it. So I wanna knit at least one pair of socks I want to knit at least one more hat. Um, and yeah, and just do less test knits. And I want to knit more for my stash. Um, I mean, like I've been knitting for my stash the whole time, but I mean it as in, I want to knit more for my stash that I've set aside for specific projects. So I want to actually knit up those projects that I've been waiting to knit up for a while. Um, so like this column over here, this is all sweater quantities I've set aside for specific projects in mine. And they those plans are like set, like I'm not budging from them for now. And I haven't budged from them for like quite a while cause they've been sitting there. Um, yeah, so those are my goals for 2023. Um, someone has suggested that maybe in each episode I could show you all like a sweater quantity and talk about what my plans are for it. So um, I might do that. Um, hopefully I will just get around to knitting them faster too. Um, 
but yeah so we'll see so thank you for joining me thank you for taking time to sit and watch everything i made in 2022 um i hope this inspires you um and you know my goal is not to make anyone feel bad either about their their knitting like i know sometimes we can get into this rhythm of comparing ourselves and comparing our productivity and that's not what knitting is about for a lot of us for us knitting a lot of knitting is about the meditative form of making art with your hands and enjoying the process of it um so i'm just going to put this disclaimer out here i knit a lot um but part of that is because i knit a lot i knit really fast and i am more of a product knitter than a process knitter so i enjoy the finished product way more than i enjoy the process not to say that I don't like knitting, I still like it, but for me, the pro finished product is the end goal. It's what I'm striving for. And so that's probably why I am very productive is because I I really wanna see things done and I wanna wear them. So yeah, so we'll see. Um, we'll see if I'm still equally productive in 2023. If I'm not, that's okay. Um, yeah, it just, it is what it is. Um, so yeah, so I hope you have a wonderful end to 2022. And I'm wishing you all a peaceful start to 2023. And I will see you guys then. Happy knitting.